So everything changes all the time. Things get disturbed and communities go through a process called succession. Here's a picture of hardened lava after a volcanic eruption in Hawaii some years ago. You can see here and there some little patches of green moss and fuzz and a dead tree burned up in the eruption. But here and there, ferns starting to grow. This is an example of primary succession, plants starting to grow on a bare substrate where no plants have grown before. Communities change over time. Every community is in a state of flux constantly. Individuals die, replaced by others of the same species or another species. Nutrients flow and energy moves through compartments. Some communities exhibit no cumulative change in any particular direction. They seem to be in equilibrium with the environment, and these are communities we call climax communities. Other communities are transient, present for only a small period of time, a few years, 10, 20, 30 years. These are called successional communities or seral, seral communities. Seers are the different stages of succession. Succession is defined as directional, cumulative change in species occupying a given area throughout time. But a climax isn't really unchanging. It turns out climaxes are dynamic equilibria. There are two kinds of succession. Primary succession on land not previously vegetated and secondary succession on land that was previously vegetated but disturbed or destroyed, leaving some remnants of life behind. Dune succession is an example of primary succession because the new um, uncolonized sand has not had plants on it before, and dunes are pushed up, sand pushed up by bodies of water to the edge of the shore that move back over time. So the bare sand is colonized by rhizomatous grasses first, holding it down <clears throat> so that in sea, shrubs colonize and eventually bigger trees. Contrast that with secondary succession, where forests were cleared for agriculture, for example, an old field is left to be covered with weeds, then larger weeds and smaller perennial plants and shrubs eventually giving way to fast-growing trees and later slow-growing trees. So in this directional cumulative change, when the community reaches a stable point, change slows down or stops, the climax is reached. But really, things change back and forth. The climax is a dynamic equilibrium in most communities. Another way of looking at primary versus secondary succession is that primary succession starts with no soil present. There may have been some there in the past, but none is left after being burned to death in, by a volcanic lava or Maybe it's brand new land emerged from the sea. Secondary succession is that in which soil is retained, which also contains plant reproductive propagules, seeds and other rhizomes and things. So here's a long list of examples of primary succession. A glacier retreating, as we see in this picture, leaving bare rocky ground. Roads covering up the landscape with concrete and pavement. Eventually they break up and may be colonized. In the tundra, gravel pads are laid down for oil drilling. Strip mines lay soil and rock bare. There's sea cliffs, landslides, volcanic islands rising out of the sea. 
lava fields like we saw the picture before, and also succession on the top of water in bog succession. So here we can see a lake like in northern Michigan, land of many, many little lakes. Over time, plants die and fall to the bottom, and the mat of sphagnum around the edge of the bog more is gets thicker and thicker dead sphagnum falls down and these things fill up so that eventually they close all together and the land succeeds into coniferous forest in 1980 mount st helens in washington state erupted big surprise for everyone around there and a plant ecologist, Roger Del Morel, took some photos to document succession in two, well, in a number of different places. I'm going to show you some photos from two places, Studebaker Ridge, which got an intense blast, and Pine Creek, which got a mild scouring. So here's Studebaker Ridge that was in the line of the big blast where things were taken back totally to bare rock and remained that way. It was in 1980, and so here's in the upper left-hand corner in 1984. I don't see any green there at all in 1986. Hmm. 1992. Oh, over here, a little bit of green showing up, and these are mosses and things, the poikilohydric plants that first germinate from spores carried in, and they modify the substrate so that larger plants can start growing. Here it is, 97, almost 20 years later. Whereas here is Pine Creek, which got only a mild scour, still a little bit of plants. You can see the year after the blast and growing bigger and bigger bushes coming in so that by five years later the vegetation is much more well developed. So when there is just a bare substrate without any soil, the ground can't hold water or nutrients. So the first colonizers are plants that can do with very little water, like lichens, mosses, and some ferns, that just germinate when there's a little bit of water and they get established and grow very slowly. Then they grow <clears throat> and put nutrients into the ground, breaking up the rock a little bit. They might be nitrogen fixing. This stage lasts a long time, so until some soil can develop. And then plants come and germinate, the seeds germinate in the moss clumps. In coastal Virginia, there's a place called Hog Island that's a long-term ecological research site. And you can see that as waters get a little higher and lower, the sand shift and land comes out of the water and goes back. So this is a site where primary succession can take place. Here's the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore in the northern lower peninsula of Michigan on the northwest side. You can't tell from this picture, but they're about 250 feet tall. In this map, you can see where this site is located, and the dunes are on the shore of Michigan, and then out in the Lake Michigan are two islands, the Manitou Islands. The Indian legend says they're made from a mother bear and her cub. So on the shores of the islands, too, you have dunes here, South Manitou Island, and those dunes are sites of primary succession. So all over the world, wherever there is shoreline, the shoreline shift, dunes shift, here on Cape Cod, which looks like an arm making a fist, all along that peninsula, lighthouses have had to move as the shoreline has shifted, Nosset Light is one of those lighthouses. Pitcher's Thistle is one of the endangered plants of this area. And sometimes people seek to hold back the dunes 
by putting fences up or maybe to keep people from cutting over to cause them to degrade also. But it's hard to hold back Mother Nature. <laughs>